Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime, and today I am back with the Odroid C4, but we're testing out Android 10. Now, this is a new release from Vodic over on the Odroid forums, and I want to give him a big shout out. This is Lineage OS 17, based on Android 10. So I'll head over to settings real quick. It's actually still in alpha, but I personally haven't had any bugs with it. We'll go up here to the Android symbol. We got Android 10, and like I mentioned, this is Lineage OS 17. One of my favorite things about this is you can enable the dark theme here. Google Play is installed. Well, Gaps will be installed with one of the images. You can download it without Gaps. You will have to use an application called Device ID, download your ID, and sign into Google to verify the device. But then you'll have Google Play up and running. I've already installed a bunch of stuff. And in this video, I just wanted to give you a quick look. We're going to test out some video playback, some native Android gaming, and a little bit of emulation by the end. But overall, this is turning out to be an awesome release for the Odroid C4. And if you're not familiar with the C4, we'll go over the specs real quick. I'll just open up Ida64 here. There's four gigabytes of LPDDR4 built in. We have the Amlogic S905X3. This is a quad-core CPU at two gigahertz. And for the GPU, we have the Mali G31. It supports OpenGL ES 3.2 and Vulkan. So if you want to use Vulkan with different emulators, no problem at all. It works, and it actually works really well with PSP. So the first thing we'll do is just head over to YouTube. And we'll go with Big Buck Bunny. Like I mentioned, even if we had this set to 4K and running on a 4K monitor, this YouTube app would not display 4K content, only up to 1080p 60. It is super smooth. You will have no trouble streaming from your favorite apps, be it Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, or Disney+. Plus. You also have the picture-in-picture -picture mode here. Next up, let's try Plex. I do have a few 4K demo videos, so we'll head down to more. Testing. And this is going to be running at 4K 30fps. It's H.264, 27.6 megabits per second. And I do have this set to the highest quality. Playback settings, original quality and playback info, 27.6 megabits per second. Super smooth 4K 30 FPS streaming. We'll go with one more. Now this is 4K 24 FPS, 18.7 megabits per second. I'm sure it's gonna do it just fine. It's kind of a time-lapse video, so it does look a little bit odd. 18.7 megabits per second. So yeah, if your app supports 4K streaming, this is gonna handle it just fine. And like I showed you with my Android TV test, 4K works great with this little chip. So let's go ahead and move over to some native Android gaming. I've downloaded all of this from the Google Play Store. We're gonna go with Asphalt 9, Stardew Valley, and Minecraft. So here we are with Asphalt 9, and this is definitely not the best performance that I've seen out of an Android device, but for a little $50 single board computer, I think it's handling these 3D Android games pretty well. Next up, we have Minecraft, and I'm using the beta version just so I have the FPS on screen, and we're getting an average of around 30 FPS. I'm set to 12 chunks, fancy graphics are off. It's not the best performance, but it's definitely playable here. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller. When we blow up a ton of stuff, it will drop down to around 14 FPS, but if you're doing mining, you'll get an average of 30, and that's fully playable for Minecraft. And finally, Stardew Valley. I was pretty sure it was gonna run it at full speed. Performance here is great. I have really no way to gauge it, but this is running at full speed. Again, I'm using that controller with it, and I'm having no troubles at all. 
Let's go ahead and move over to some emulation. I'm using the Reset Collection. This is a front end for Android that you can purchase from the Google Play Store. I just have some Dreamcast and PSP set up. When we're testing out PSP, I'm going to be using the Vulkan back end, and I'm going to try to keep it at 2x. But first, we have some Dreamcast using ReDream. Upscale to 1280 by 960. This is Fighting Vipers 2. Performance here is great. FPS is up in the top left hand corner. You're going to have no trouble at all doing Dreamcast with ReDream on this little board. Let's go with one more using the ReDream emulator. Here's Sonic Adventure 2. Again, FPS is up in the top left hand corner, 1280 by 960, and it's running really great here. Moving over to PSP using PPSSPP. This is Soul Calibur, Broken Destiny, 2X resolution, no hacks. The FPS is up in the top right hand corner. We're getting a constant 60. A lot of the PSP games are going to be fully playable at 2X resolution using that Vulcan back end. But when you move over to the harder to run stuff like the God of War series, Kill Zone, or even Midnight Club, you'll have to drop it down to 1X resolution and turn frame skip on. But here's Tekken 6. This is kind of a mid range game to run. 2x, no hacks, running perfectly. But all in all, I have to say that the Odroid C4 does handle PSP games quite well, especially using that Vulcan back in. Good night. And real quick before I get out of here, I just want to mention that yes, touch does work with these single board computers, but you'll need a touch compatible monitor. Now this is the extend touch. Unfortunately, the C4 doesn't support like HDMI over USB type C and it doesn't even have a USB type C port in. So I have to plug in power HDMI and another USB to enable touch on this monitor, but it does work well. Now I would not suggest going out to buy something like this to make a little tablet, but if you do have a portable monitor that supports touch, just note that the C4 will work with it. But in the end, this version of Lineage 17 does work well on the Odroid C4. Now I'm going to leave links to the Odroid forum. Vodic ported this over, so we have Android 10 now on the C4. He does recommend using an eMMC module over an SD card, and I have not tested it on an SD, but I'm sure it'll be a bit slow. But that's it for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my other Odroid C4 videos. And like always, thanks for watching.